welcome to this level five video. I'm excited to show you all the stuff that my horses have been working on. I can't believe Shiny is gonna show you the groundwork for level five and I've only had it for a couple months. So I'm so impressed with her trainability. Uh, Alicia, of course, is a superstar. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to show you the student level swag. So if you do the virtual horse show or you can do um, the student level test, just on their own, not as part of the competition. If you score 80% or higher on your test and your level, you get your student level gift as well as your student level certificate. There's a little online quiz that goes with each of them. So level one, you get this super high quality treat pouch. It's got zippers in the front. It's got nice big pocket for all your cookies in the middle. And it even has a little secret zipper apart in the back so you can slip your credit card or your money or whatever back in there if you had a horse show adjustable belt so I'm loving it level two you get this nice little reusable grocery tote bag so you can use this for groceries you can use it taking stuff to the barn whatever you want to do with it totally up to you I'll just use my level four shoulder bag here and open this sucker up to show you the level three prize inside you've got a tumbler so this is great for keeping your stuff hot or cold it's of course bpa free and uh dishwasher safe the level three all of them have their colored logos on it this is the level four gift which is a shoulder bag with the zipper and it's got a pocket in the front so you can use that going around keeping your stuff taking stuff on a trail or whatever you want to do bringing that to a horse show whatever your goals are and then since I'm going to show you the level five video and I actually do earn my level five. The swag for level five is super cool. So this is a uh, knife that you get. So having a knife is super important for when you're working with horses. Uh, this has a nice little clip function that you can clip it onto your belt loop or something like that. It says Harmony Horsemanship Student Level Five on there. And it is a nice little knife there. So this is good if you need to cut string for hay bales. It's handy if you need to get your horse out of a tricky situation. You've got to cut them free if they got caught up in a rope or whatever. But it's always a good idea to have a knife with you. If you're hauling, you want to have a knife in your truck handy that goes with you. Or when you're riding around, especially on trails, it's really handy to have a knife as well for that. So hope you guys enjoy all the swag and, uh, and take a look at level five. All right, here we go with Shiny in level five. I'm just gonna bring her over to a starting part over here. So we start with on the horse's right side. This is for test A on the level five pattern. And so I'm gonna start off here with the trot and then into the canter on the right lead and then into trot again. And then we come down into walk just to reposition ourselves before we send out on the boomerang with the canter draw towards us. So you can see she's got that going really well. The, the trot into the canter transition piece for the square would score the wow factor, the five, if she had done a more collected canter. Uh, because it was a little bit more spread out, it wouldn't score that wow factor. The boomerang was really good though. She cantered straight towards me, so that would score well, and she went out nice and far away from me, so that would score uh, the five. And then this is the circles with the trot, halt, trot, trot, halt, trot transitions where the horse halts out on the circle and does not come in towards you. So to earn a wow factor here, you want to have your horse decently far away from you. So that way they're, um, it's a little bit harder level of difficulty. And then you want them to go right from trot to halt. So you can see Shiny's doing well with her halt to trot there she took a couple steps of walk before she went out and she's not completely bent on the circle so this would not score the wow five mark but it would score a uh, four because she is stopping in the direction of where we want her to go and the other direction though was much better she was a little bit further away from me and a little bit better bent on the circle as well so now we're going to take a look at the backwards circle. So this is asking for the backwards circle. If we wanted the wow five mark, we'd be looking for the horse bent in the direction of the circle. And so their hip would be leading the turn the whole way. 
and it would be very smooth. So here Shiny is doing everything correctly. She's moving backwards around me and she's bringing her hip towards me, but she's not really curving on the circle and it was a little bit choppy. So that would be a pass um, in terms of the four. And you can see I wasn't pulling her around me. She was going off of rhythm. So it's still gonna score well, but not gonna score that five wow factor there. And of course, I'm really proud of Shiny just for being able to do all this stuff because she uh, has only been with me for a couple months and is just figuring out all this stuff. So now we're doing our haunches in. So we're looking for three tracks. We're going directly towards the camera. You can see, um, we can, we can, it's hard to see the three tracks when I'm coming towards there because my body's blocking, but we could see that she definitely had the hind right foot was leading where we were headed. And then now going haunches in left, uh, see how we can see the three tracks. We see the back left foot by itself. Then we see the diagonal pair of the back right and the front left. And then we see the front right off by itself there. And we want to see the horse curving in for haunches in. So when we're haunches in left, she would be bending with her head to the left. And when she was going to the right, it would be bending to the right. So that wouldn't score the wow five. A wow five would be if I didn't have to be quite so close to her and she could maintain that a little bit smoother, but it would definitely score a four because it was correct. It just wasn't as smooth, required a little bit more cueing from me to maintain it. Uh, so now we're doing our Spanish walk, which Shani literally just learned uh, yesterday when we were filming this. So I'm so impressed that she picked this up so well. So in she, her first two steps are really good. And then after that, she kind of stomps a little bit, which is pretty normal for a horse that's just learning how to do that Spanish walk. So this, this would score um, like a three out of five because it's a little bit more stompy than what we would be looking for. A Spanish walk would literally just be a lift in the air and then a put back down and a lift in the air and a put back down. And I'll show you guys a proper Spanish walk with Alicia at the end of this video so you can take a look and see what that looks like. And then here is our side pass towards the pedestal where you get up into the mounting position and then I give her a little cookie on the other side the same way that I would do if I was getting on to ride my horse. So you can see she's doing that really nicely there. And uh, then we're gonna get off the mounting block and do the very tricky putting our hind feet on the mounting block and doing the 180 pivots, which was a little tough for her to learn. So here I'm gonna bring her up to the pedestal and she does her four feet first. And I allow her a moment to just pause just so that way we can kind of keep that as a thing that she does. And now we want to see a 180 turn. So she's got to do a complete 180. I'm trying to go slowly and smoothly so she does not fall off of the pedestal. And she gets most of the way there and I switch sides because I can see she's really close to the edge there just to get those last little bit to get that 180. So that would score a four there because she did do it correctly and it was relatively smooth, but I had to really support her and I ended up having to switch sides, so not as smooth and easily cued as possible. And then uh, we'll finish up and go the 180 the other direction. So that was well done. She did it, you know, accurately was listening, but could be smoother, could be a little less cueing from me. So now we're going to do the 180 in the other direction. And she's coming around pretty nicely here. It's a little bit smoother this time. But I did have to do a, a little hesitation step there uh, to make sure she didn't come off the edge there. So you want to make sure you get those 180s nice and cleanly in both directions. So that way um, it's nice and smooth for your horse and showing that they can do that completely. Uh, there was our bounce jumps. So the jumps are set anywhere between 9 to 10 feet is usually normal for horses. And they jump in and they jump out. And she did that really smoothly and then you want your horse to canter with you a couple strides afterwards and then I drew shiny back in towards me so now comes the tricky part where we're gonna go to Liberty and take off that halter and rope and it makes it a little bit tough because we've just done some jumps which can sometimes get their energy up a little bit and now she's gonna have to stick with me so the first task is to do some slow trot to fast trot and then to a halt transition so this is going to be a little bit uh, tricky here. 
because I'm getting uh, shiny just kind of lined up here. So we're going to do a little bit of trotting and then we want to do fast trotting and then we want to go to halt. And so ideally shiny uh, would have stopped right with me there. She got a little distracted. So the slow trot to fast trot, there was a little bit of a transition in speed there that you could see, but it wasn't hugely noticeable. So that's not going to score the five wow mark. And uh, the trot halt transition, we want to see it a little bit more abrupt. So see how Shiny kind of swung her haunches out a little bit there. So that's not going to score that five wow mark. We'd want to see them stop square on. Uh, really, Shiny's doing fantastic considering this is um, pretty new uh, to all of her. And then we're going into our S pattern change of direction. So here we did the one turn and then Shiny got confused for a second and I had to use a cheek hold to get her back. So again, not going to score the five for the wow because it went super smooth, but we got her trotting changes of direction. And uh, so that's still going to be a passing mark there. And uh, then we get into the really tricky stuff where we're going to do the Liberty Circles and doing the uh, trot, canter, trot transition is what it's looking for is to show some canter each direction. So to set Shiny up for success, I just did a walking circle first to make sure we were set up. So Shiny has never actually done the canter circles. I was working her in the smaller space um, in the other arena. This is her first time doing the canter liberty circles out here in the big arena. And I'm filming this with the Pivo. And so the Pivo got a little bit confused there about where to follow. It got a little bit confused about that canter circle where to follow. Uh, but you can see that she did a really nice can trot, canter, trot transition and then came back to me. So that would score really well. Um, I did use the walk circle to get her set up. So it's not going to score a five, but it'd probably be a four and a half out of five because it was a really nice circle. And then when I go to change direction, Shiny decides to be a little bit cheeky and wants to go run off and do her own thing and go to the bathroom. So already this direction, this particular circle to the right is not going to score well, but it's all going to depend on how I bring her back and if we can get it accomplished. So just because your horse leaves you in the pattern doesn't mean that it's going to be the end of the world and you're going to totally fail your pattern. Uh, this would still be a um, not what we're looking for in terms of the horse leaving, but if I can get it pulled off, I could, I could score myself a two and a half here. And as long as I get some four and a halves or some fives, I'm still going to be up over that 80% threshold. So it's not going to be the end of the world as long as we can... Um, get it accomplished here. Otherwise, we'd be looking at a one or a zero depending on how this goes here. So I want to be able to show some trot and get my canner so that way I can get the two and a half. Uh, we're not going to score a three at this point because she did run away and leave me. So it would be a little bit of that, you know, not what we're looking for quite thing. So there we get our nice little canner. We have our trot and then we have our bring back. So we do get it accomplished there. Uh, well done, little shiny. Um, but because she did run off, it would bring that score down to that two and a half. So you still want to bring your horse around and finish up. Don't give up because it is possible to still get your 80% and, and get that accomplished there. So here I went to do back up by the tail as the next task, but Shiny decided to go sniff the pylon. So I had to make a little correction there. And then we're going to ask for a backup and we're looking for six steps. So we're going to ask for that tail backup cue. And here we go, one, two, little itch there, three, four, five, six. So she did that correctly. Um, she snuck in a little extra step at the end there. And uh, she had to be corrected from looking at the pylon. So that's going to score a little bit lower at the three and a half because it's not as accurate as uh, what we'd like to see to earn that four. And then we have our ground tie while being noisy. So I hear I'm clapping my hands. Shiny moved a little bit because she was thinking that I might ask her to do something. She's not scared, obviously. She's just paying attention. So that would score us a four. She did it really well. She doesn't get that wow mark because she did move a little bit. But overall, she did it pretty nicely. 
And then we have our smile trick, which just is to show how you can work with different parts of your horse's body. And Shiny literally just started learning this yesterday, so it's super cute. Try to get a good one here where she brings her lip up uh, really intently. So there's really good. She holds it for a second. So again, that's going to be a pass. It's going to be a four. It's not going to be a wow five because she, um, she did it, but I had to cue her a lot for it. And then this is our downward dog, which she would score a five four because she did that really, really nicely. I'm going to turn her to the side so that way you guys can see that again for our downward dog. Um, the Pivo goes a little bit crazy there for a second. And then there is our downward dog or downward horse. So all in all, Shiny did that really, really well. Um, I had to kind of show her the cue system there for uh, bringing her into the downward horse. So it might score a four and a half there on that second one. And then I just thought I would show the fast trot slow. It was the slow trot to fast trot and then to the halt transition. See if I could just get that a little smoother. So that time, see how Shiny's hips didn't swing out on the halt transition so that would score better there. I'm still having to guide her with her um, cheek there uh, but that would score better than her hips falling out to the side. And then I just wanted to do our little circles one more time because I'm super proud of how she's doing them but also see if I could get a little bit uh, cleaner with our transition. So this is without having to do the walk circle first getting our trot into our canner, into our trot, and then our bring back. So that would score really well. Uh, she, she could be more bent on the circle, a little bit more curved in her body, and be a little bit smoother. So that, that would score a four and a half and not quite the five, but she's listening, she's taking direction well there, and she's very clearly getting our trot. So see how she's bending a little bit out on the circle? She's bending a little bit to the left but she does give me the trot, the canner, the trot, and then here she accidentally grabs the, the canner for another stride to bring back. So that, that would score a four there just because we had the little miscommunication there about picking up the canner again. But overall, really well done. So now we're gonna look at the level five riding pattern. So this is Alicia doing the riding pattern. I'm trotting with no stirrups and it's a trotting change of direction with no stirrups and you can see that she's doing that pretty well there uh, going around and that I'm not bouncing all over the place so that's what we're looking for and then I get to take my stirrups back and then into canner I go up into the right lead and now it's our little serpentine pattern with changes of lead so at this point in level five they do not have to be flying lead changes so I'm doing simple lead changes here to get my canner changes of lead. And then it's a little jump at the top end of the arena into uh, a transition down. And we're going to halt over the pole and we're going to side pass these poles. So it's an L shape side pass for the level five side pass. So we're doing a little side pass here. And the goal is for the horse not to be hitting the poles at all and to try to make that nice and smooth. So, so far this is a really good pattern. The trotting changes of direction with no stirrups were smooth. I wasn't bouncing all over the place. So they could be a five and then the serpentine changes of lead uh, were pretty smooth. The transitions were a little bit, uh, could be a little bit more precise. So they wouldn't score a five, but they could score a four and a half. The jump was perfect, easy rhythm, that'd be a five, and the side pass was also really well done. And then here we have our uh, leg yielding, or sorry, our shoulder, our shoulder in. So I was looking for the three tracks, and then we take it into a leg yield over to the wall, and then we're gonna make a little teardrop turn here and do the leg yield over as well. So it was a little shoulder in and then the leg yielding and we're looking for the forward steps, forward crossing legs. So that front left leg is crossing over the right leg and the horse is staying relatively straight and nicely bent, bent there to the left doing the leg yield. So that was all really well done. And then we're gonna bring it up into a trot here and we get to trot our daisy pattern. So we saw our daisy pattern in level four and it was at the walk. 
now we are trotting our daisy pattern. So we're looking for Alicia bending around that center cone and being able to change bend as she goes right around the center cone. We want to see her bending to the right. And then as we come to the left, we want to see her bending through her body to the left and then bending through her body to the right. She's a little stiffer to the left than she is to the right. You can see her nose pokes out a little bit more. She's a little bit more braced in her body. So this would score a four because I'm doing the pattern and maintaining the pace and it's looking pretty good, but she could have more bend in her body. So then we go up into our canner for our different speeds of canner. I'm gonna make a little change here of direction and then now we're going to do our fast canner so it was our slow canner first now it's our fast canner and so you can see it's definitely a different pace and then into our uh, halt there and I'm going to be taking off the bridle to show our bridleless riding so bridleless in level five starts to take up the level of difficulty a little bit and we're going to start to see a few more little things happen in here than what we saw in level four. So this is the bridleless part is important because it teaches us to use our body more. It teaches our horses to be more calm and relaxed with us. And so now we're starting to see doing a little bit more uh, control and moderation of the speed with the horse. So we saw a trot into a transition for our halt. And now we're going to take a look at the forehand turn, so making sure I can move the horse's hips. And so we're doing this all bridleless, which means that she's moving mostly off of my leg and my seat. Now doing the 180 turn for the forehand turn the other direction. And uh, then we're going to do our haunch turn, so now making sure I can shift my weight and ask her to move her shoulders. Haunch turn means move the shoulders. Uh, she had to stop there to have a little sneeze. So we get our 180 turn to the right, and then now we're gonna do our 180 turn to the left. So making sure we've got that understanding of moving our shoulders and then moving our hips. So we've got them different and isolated. So those were really well done. All right, that wraps up the bridalless portion, and now we are doing the building confidence. So this is the splash box going through a water box. So any type of water box, uh, you can see there's a little bit of water in there. Um, you can see the bucket from us filling it with water. Then you're going to play peekaboo with your horse. So peekaboo is being able to cover your horse's face with a blanket or tarp or something like that and have your horse not freak out about it. So you're able to cover their face and then peekaboo, they can see you over there. So I'm reusing my shower curtain as my back over the tarp because it's uh, just easier to use kind of the same thing like that. So I'm going to turn her around. And now we want to see the horse backing over. And so you can use a tarp, a crinkly tablecloth, whatever works for you. The idea is that as your horse backs up, their feet might catch the tarp the same way that it's doing there for her. And your horse is not freaking out over it. They're able to handle that object moving and crinkling around their feet. So Alicia does that really, really well. Uh, definitely really well done for her. And now I'm going to put my reins on here and we're going to mount up so if you do not ride your horse you have the option to drive your horse and that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have a cart you could just long line them and you're driving them from behind so that's an option and then we have uh, if you're riding then you can get on and you can ride your horse and it's up to you uh, what you choose to do because some horses are not ridden for various reasons they're too small they've got an injury you never really know what it is so here we're going to drag I'm doing the riding level 5 test so here I'm going to drag and you have to drag at the trot so I'm just using a stuffed toy and a rope stuffed toys are great because they're soft if they hit Alicia's legs as we're going around there it's not going to be any problem and we come around and you can see Alicia is totally like not even phased by this at all. So she does this extremely well. And just to kind of show off for good measure, I just swing the thing around. You don't have to do that. I'm just showing off that my horse is really definitely quiet with that object. So then we're going to come around over here and we have a gate to do. And it's good if you can show a solid gate because 
that is a more difficult task to do than if you have, let's say, a rope gate. So whatever gate you have that you can work with, I'm using this gate here, and you can make it easier on yourself where I'm not using the metal latch piece. I've actually got a piece of lead rope that we used as a rope to put around the little post end to make it a little bit easier. So I'm doing a back through gate where Alicia is backing through and then I'll turn her butt around and we'll shut it. And if you want to get the best marks for this, you're going to want to keep your hand on the gate at all times and not let it go. There you can see the rope that I'm talking about to make it a little easier to latch up. If you take your hand off of the gate and you have to kind of push it close or push it away from you, anything like that, then even though you will get a pass and you'll get a, a you know, you might get a four out of five, you wouldn't get a five out of five if you're letting go of the gate and having to push or kick it around to get it to happen. Here is a forwards gate. So just because of the way my farm was set up to do the gate meant that I had to do the gate again to come back into the area where all the different obstacles were. And our forwards gate is actually better than our backwards gate. The backwards gate, if there were cows in the obstacle pen there, I would have accidentally let some out because there was a bit of a wide gap. The second gate I did was very close and tight uh, that the horse would not would have blocked any cows that were potentially in the pen. So that would have scored better. So now we're going to do our garacha pull. So this is to show that you can kind of ride with one hand a little bit, that your horse is okay with things that are dragging, things that are up high a little bit, and that they're okay with all that sort of stuff. If I wanted to get a wow mark for my garacha pull, it would be if my horse was bending in the direction where we were going, and if they had a little bit of a collected posture. So you can kind of see how Alicia's head is kind of up and her nose is poking out, and sometimes she looks off to the outside. If I want to get that wow mark, then we're going to want to see her a little bit more collected, meaning her framed up a little bit more. But in terms of she's not upset by this, you know, she's doing it, she's listening, she's making those changes of direction, not bothered by the pole at all. So we're still going to score a four, but we're not going to score that wow mark on that particular uh, obstacle there. And then our last obstacle here is the umbrella where you open it, which um, you could, you missed a little bit of that because I held it up above the camera, but you can see Alicia totally not faced by that at all. That would score a five for sure. Last but not least, I've just got Alicia here to show you a better Spanish walk here where they're single steps. So see how Alicia does not paw and stomp the ground. She's doing a little bit of a lazy Spanish walk, but she's bringing her foot up one foot at a time and then straight down to the ground, not doing the whole stompy stomp thing. I'm going to finish with just a couple big ones here, trying to get a bit better reach, but that shows you a little smoother Spanish walk. So I hope you guys enjoyed level five. I'd love to hear who you liked better, Alicia or Shiny, who did it best.